You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Good morning and welcome to Built on the Rock, a radio show dedicated to helping married and engaged couples, dating couples to build their marriages and relationships on the rock that is Jesus Christ. Here I am, Father Brito Berkmans, the host of this show, here with my co-host Sandy Labuvi. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning, Father Brito. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. A um, lot of things going on, as we all know. But I think somehow, I think all of us are trying to negotiate all the storms that are hitting us, not just Ida in Louisiana or, and other parts of the country, but uh, all the storms. There sure has been a lot going on in this world, hasn't there? Oh, I know. Even within our own country, just a lot of challenges, a lot of changes. I mean, I think back to how we used to do this show in the studio, right? Oh, and boy. As much as we complained about the drive into the city, it sure seemed a lot easier than what we just tried to do to get us all connected through video right now. So it's it's amazing to me how much has changed in this past year plus, right? Oh. I mean, I cannot agree with you more. I mean, in my own personal life, so many things have changed. Yes. Just two months ago, I retired after being a priest for almost 40 years. Not that I wanted to retire. I would have loved to continue. But that is the reality of it. And I'm here um, living far away from, from Park Ridge and starting a new life. It's, it, it is strange. It, it feels... And of course, the pandemic, I mean... All of us have to negotiate with that, with that challenge, with that stress. Um, I know. And then what went on in other parts of the world and with the virus, with the storms, with the economy, everything. So I know all of us are trying to survive somehow. Right, right. It's sometimes it seems like change is the only constant anymore. Isn't that the truth? Oh, yes. Oh yes, yeah. and I hope, and I hope that through it all, we all become more resilient in dealing with the challenges of life. I think that is very true. But I think another thing that all of this has taught us, especially the pandemic, um, is just how much we need each other. Right? Um, oh, yes. In the early days of the pandemic, how starved people were for connection, um, and when I even think. Um, about my own situation, you know, my family lives far away, out in Montana and Colorado, and um, my father, with his delicate health situation, um, is just was just so concerned about catching this virus that he pretty much shut the world out even more so um, than what we had been required to do. And it's hard, you know, it's just hard. God created us to be in community. He created us to be in relationship with people, and when that gets stripped from you, it's a very bleak world, wouldn't you say? Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. And yet, and I have to say, coming coming full circle with that, you know, my father, as you know, um, we had a scare with him a couple months ago, thought he was um, not going to survive. Um, and I spent days on end in the hospital with him. And what was the one thing that my dad wanted then? You know, I think in these moments when we're facing death, we become the most real version of ourselves. We become raw because what, what do we got to lose anymore? And the constant with my father, all those days that I was there, he wanted company. He just wanted someone there with him. So again, it just highlights to me this need we have as human beings by God's beautiful design of us um, to be in communion and in relationship with each other. 
So yeah, and I think it is true in the church too. I remember, you know, when this pandemic hit and how creative we got in order to be in touch with each other. And I think you remember the Bible study we started. Over 120, 150 people signed up to do this virtual Bible studies. At that time, we were completely in lockdown, so at least we could see each other, hear each other. This deep desire to connect, and I think hopefully our show is trying to fill that need for our couples to build their marriages, to realize that God made us for love, God made us for relationships, because God Himself is love and God is community. Yeah. So we have always done this, right? The formula of interviewing a couple. And I was going to yeah. say, that's a perfect segue into leading into our conversation today, don't you think? Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, we, when did we last film, Father Brito? I'm trying to remember. Oh, gosh. Oh, I think it's been more than a year, I think. Oh, no. More than a year. I thought it was last October. Oh, either way. Either way, it's been a long time. We had a lovely couple, Joe and Elizabeth. McCormick, who came, um, well, remotely joined us, <laughs> and that had its own challenges too, um, but they were so kind to join us from their phones, and we all called in for our last show, where we were able to spend a little time just getting to know Joe and Elizabeth, because as you said, the model for our program, for those who, it's been a little while, <laughs> um, is to bring a, bring couples in. We're not coming before you as these imparters of great wisdom. We're trying to learn from each other. Sometimes this is the best way to learn. So we bring couples in to be interviewed and just get to know their story and learn what works for them, learn what challenges they've faced. And hopefully that can provide both encouragement to our listeners during some difficult situations. And it can provide maybe even some insight on new pathways to, to, to explore. So anyway, Joe and Elizabeth were with us. And um, I think we wanted to now go ahead and have our follow-up session to that, which is where you and I just meet ourselves and talk through the wisdom that we've gleaned from that interview. So Joe and Elizabeth, um, just by way of review, had met through St. Paul, the church that you were pastor of for 12 years. Um, Elizabeth had moved here from Germany and was looking for, as she put it, a faith uh, family, I believe were her words, um, to find here in America. And through her employer, she ended up at St. Paul of the Cross. And that is where Joe and uh, Elizabeth's story begins. Um, from what Joe said, their first meeting probably wasn't the best. <laughs> he was uh, preparing for his licensure as a banker, which is a pretty hectic time. And he just wanted to get people signed up for his usher ministry at St. Paul, um, get people to commit. And he expressed how difficult it is to get people to commit, you know. So here comes Elizabeth. Um, who was introduced to him as a potential usher. And I think his first words to her were, were something along the lines of, hi, nice to meet you. Do you want to be full-time or part-time? And he thought later, whoa, in retrospect, that was probably not a good first impression. <laughs> but needless to say, God worked through all of that and brought them together. And they've been married for a few years now. So that's just a little bit of the background um, yes. of Joe and Elizabeth. And we learned quite a few wonderful things. Right, Father Brito? Oh, yeah. For example, I think the first thing that struck with me was she came from Germany and I don't think growing up in Germany, she ever thought that she would come here, meet an American, you know, someone who's a little older than she is, different culture, different language. And she comes here for work. And then here is a connection where she meets him in the church as an usher. I mean, it's marvelous. You know, I, I, one of the things I marvel about God is that how God brings us from, different background, different parts of the world, different languages, and puts us together. I mean, I think about my own life. You now, as a boy growing up in India, I used to wonder about other countries and nations. And one of my favorite subjects was geography, because I like to learn about other parts of the world. Never imagined that I would be living the major part of my life in other parts of the world. I lived in Italy. I lived in America. It's amazing. And so many people that have come into my life over the years, including you, Sandy, I mean, 28 years ago, you and I became friends and we are like family. And uh, I have people like that as family in other parts of the world too. What a gift. Right. And I think it is important to marvel at the, at the wisdom of God, at the love of God that gives us this gift. Yes, yes, I couldn't agree more. That is 
key because it, it just makes me laugh when I think how we try to pen our own stories, right? And plan our own agendas. And we have, we like our roadmaps. There's some security and some safety in that. But time and time again, I find that it's those detours from the path that make my life most meaningful. And that's where the real jewels lie. So I think the lesson to be learned there is to hold on a little more loosely to our plan for our life and allow God to, to enter into that and do his work, as he did with Joan Elizabeth, as you said, bringing her from Germany to this guy who was born. He said he was uh, at St. Paul the Cross from day one, <laughs> spent all his life in this town called Park Ridge, Illinois, and brought the two of them together. Um, God can bring people together from anywhere. And I, I think we just need to have some faith and trust in his plan in doing that, far more than our own plans. And, and for me, the, the implication of that is that, you know, keep your heart and mind open. Yes. You never know where God is going to surprise you. It's not just about your romantic life, but in general, you know, every person that God brings you into your path is a gift. And I, I, I wish that we can approach life that way. And if only people would approach life that way, I think a lot of things would be different. So for me, that was a, a big lesson and that God, and that is why we call this show actually God of connections. He's the one who connects us, puts right. us together. You know, right. in, the, in the Bible, there is that story about Ruth. You heard about Ruth. She was a Moabite and uh, her mother-in-law was a Jew. And she, you know, the, the, her husband dies and, and the mother-in-law says, you know, why don't you return to your own people? And she turns to her and says, your people will be my people. Your family will be my family. Your God will be my God. And she follows her. And what happens? Ruth becomes the pathway through which God's history of salvation follows. So to realize God is connecting us and we should be open to that. And I think that is the lesson that we all have to think about. Right. I do remember how during the interview, Joe had kind of um, admitted, but with a bit of a hesitation that, uh, you know, he talked about this checklist that we as humans may have when we think about our future mate, you know, and what items are on that checklist, because this is what we we need, right, according to our our plan. And at one point in the interview, Joe said that he and Elizabeth are complete opposites. Those are his words, complete opposites. You mentioned the age span. I think there's a 20 year difference between them, the cultural difference between them. But God can work through all of that if we but let him. Um, the key thing when he followed up on that complete opposite comment, he said, but their faith is their common denominator. So as long as, again, we allow God to lead us um, and we have that faith and trust in him, look what he can do. Joe and Elizabeth are, are proof of that. And I think that leads us into the next point that sometimes we think these differences matter. No, those yeah. differences don't matter. Right. And I think it's almost time for a break. So don't change the dial. We are coming back. We are going to take a, just a little break now. We're headed to the fairways for a fun-filled round of golf supporting the work of Catholic Charities in Cook County. Join us on Monday, September 27th for Catholic Charities Monsignor Michael Bolin Golf Invitational at Butterfield County Club in Oak Brook. Golfers of all skill levels are welcome as we hit the links and raise vital funds so Catholic Charities can continue to accompany clients on their journey to greater self-sufficiency. Skill contests, fabulous prizes, and good company await all who attend this signature event. For registration and sponsorship opportunities, call 312-948-6864. 
That's 312-948-6864 or visit catholiccharities.net. Welcome back. Es fabuloso verlos. Dobrze jest znowu być razem. It's good to be together again. After so many months apart, pandemic capacity limits have been lifted, and we want to welcome everyone back to church. We can all pray together again. And listen as our choirs lift their voices in song. We've been together in spirit. And now when you are ready, our doors are open wide. Nuestras puertas están abiertas de par en par. Nasze drzwi są otwarte. And we're here to welcome you back to Catholic Mass. Do you have an old bicycle that's not being used? Consider donating it to Catholic Charities Veterans Bike Project of Lake County. Skilled volunteers are refurbishing bicycles to make them safe and ready to be used by veterans to get to and from their new places of work. We also gratefully accept financial contributions that are used to purchase bike helmets and other safety accessories. Our veterans have faithfully served the United States and now it is our privilege to serve them. For more information on the Veterans Bike Project of Lake County, call 847-782-4219. That's 847-782-4219. Welcome back to our show, Built on the Rock. My name is Sandy, and I'm sitting here with Father Brito, and we are unpacking some of the wonderful insights we learned from Joe and Elizabeth, who we had interviewed several months back. So we were talking before the break about how God can bring people together from anywhere, right? This, this young girl in Germany, Joe here in, in Park Ridge, Illinois, and look at the union that came from that. Um, what we just started to talk about then before the break was that these differences that were very striking between Joe and Elizabeth, between um, when it comes to their cultural differences, their age difference, um, as Joe said, complete opposites that they were, um, these things really ultimately don't matter in the end when we're talking about having a meaningful relationship um, with someone else. So Joe did talk about there being some challenges with the language, more so when he's in Germany visiting Elizabeth's family. But their love is something so much deeper than that, that they're able to um, survive those seemingly challenging setbacks without issue. And I think that gets to the point you were you were trying to get to, Father Britton, when you talked about a relationship really being a union of, of souls. I mean, a much deeper union than these superficial things that we sometimes think uh, probably we give more credit to, you know, the type of music you listen to, your hobbies. All things that are important and when you share those can make for some wonderful experiences for sure, but that's not the foundation of the union that's going to survive. Right, Father Brito? Yeah, I mean, in my experience working with couples, I have seen couples that are so different and yet they make it work. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my dear friends from Milwaukee, I mean, she is this extrovert and she loves to have friends and this and that. But she started dating this guy who is very quiet, doesn't talk a lot. In a way, it is good because, you know, if both of them are big talkers, you know, there will be no time for each other. <laughs> so, you know, God compliments. And uh, instead of worrying about what music we listen to or the food we love or whatever, which are okay, they are significant. But the real thing is the union of souls. Now, when you talk about the two shall become one, it is the spirit. Now, I've often marveled about that. You know, the age difference doesn't matter. Culture difference matter because when two individuals meet, it is their spirits that connect. You know, the body is there, 
but it's the spirit that connects. And so you talk about old souls, you know, some of them may be young in age, but they call them old souls because the spirit is what, what really matters. And I think that leads to the next thing that I want to bring about, because I think we are short on time. Uh, it's about uh, how church is a great place to meet people. Mm. I know that we meet a lot of people online. I mean, I've done so many weddings now of couples that I've met online. But I think meeting people in church, I think it's a good thing. Think about going in here, those oh. people who met there, right? Right, right. Um, and yeah, that's definitely the beginning of, of Joe and Elizabeth's story. And I also want to stress, um, it's not only wonderful to meet people in church, but it just listening to their story. And even when Elizabeth talked about, um, do you remember at one point she was talking about how she kind of slipped away from the church for a couple of years. And she said it was a learning process for her, um, where she learned that she came to understand that it wasn't that God was doing, as she said it, um, bad things to her but it was rather the people within the church that weren't the best and that turned her away from the church for a period of time. And we hear these stories over and over again. But then she said, ultimately, it's the people that bring you back to the church. And so I just, I think it's so important to remember how critical we are as members of this church community um, in enhancing the faith journey and the livelihood of our fellow brothers and sisters in that same community. Um, it's, it's a role not to be overlooked. Um, when you have people that are welcoming, uh, the church can flourish and grow. Um, and unfortunately, the converse of that is true as well. So I just wanted to highlight, um, yes, great place to meet, but it also is a great responsibility for us as part of that community to bring the best of us to the people that God brings to that community. Right. But for me, you know, meeting the person in church says something about the type of person that I want to meet. Yes. I don't know if I, yes. if I, if I am clear about that. Yes, it shows you your know, priority. Yeah, I mean, people say I meet somebody in a bar. I'm mm -hmm. not saying God cannot work through a bar. I'm sure God does that. Or you meet somebody on, online. But I think meeting someone in church says faith is important to me. Yes. I mean, yeah. I still look at the couples that met at the University of Illinois at the Newman Center on a Koinonia retreat. And some of them are great examples of faithful couples that they continue to raise great Catholic families. I watch that. So I'm not saying that you need to meet, but I think it is a nice thing to do. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I remember back in my dating years, years and years ago, um, I was in a relationship with a, a guy and I just remember getting to a point where all of a sudden he started coming with me to the Bible study and going with me to mass. And I thought, is this really about me or is it about this is what he wants. This is, you know, and so it end, ended up ultimately causing the relationship to um, to end, which was was God's providence. But it's true. When you meet someone there, you, you don't have to question why they're there. They're not there because of you, right? You met them there. Um, so there's some authenticity that that kind of carries along with it in terms of what their priorities are too, generally speaking. There's always exceptions, but I agree with you. So, you know, we have a few more minutes, but one last point I think I would like to bring out is um, I was very touched when at one point Joe said, Elizabeth has helped me to grow in my faith. Yeah. What a beautiful thing. You know, we are, the whole idea of two people coming together, the ultimate purpose is get each other to heaven. Yes. yes. I'll never forget what one mom once said to me at St. Paul, she said, Father, isn't my first obligation is to make sure that I get my husband and my children to heaven. We forget that. That is the ultimate purpose. So if a couple can help each other to grow in the faith and so to approach marriage from that perspective, uh, instead of, you know, whether we are going to be successful or be prosperous or whatever, but to say, ultimate goal is salvation. And then, you know, all other priorities will be set in the right place. You know, when I, when I, I mean, I, I just do weddings. I've got a wedding coming this week, two weddings. I mean, I love those couples, but I wish they would put the faith. I mean, I just did a wedding a few days ago and the couple wanted to make it as short as possible. 
You can have three readings. They cut it down to two readings. We don't want to do this, do that, because we want to come get out, get out of church. Oof. We're missing the point. We are missing the point. But there is such focus on the party. Oh my gosh, you know, it's true. That would always I mean, sad me. Yeah, it is <laughs> so so much effort on the party. Yeah, and and so we misplace the emphasis. That's right. Where what is really important? You know. Yeah, how often I can think of weddings of mutual friends where, you know, you often have this this big break between the ceremony and the reception. And, oh, what are you going to do during that four-hour window? So often um, I can remember people saying, you know what, I'm just going to come for the reception. You know, because it was just too much of a hassle to figure out what to do between the two. And, yeah, it would break my heart because if there's anything you're just going to come for, <laughs> it's the union, the sacrament itself, right? But as a society, you're right. We do tend to focus on the wrong things. You know what I tell my couples? If they are not there for your mass and ceremony in the church, don't feed them. Ah. They, didn't, they didn't come to the real wedding. How do you come for the party? I mean, anyway. Yeah, good advice. Uh, <laughs> but I yeah, I have, we, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I think we are coming to the end. I think we got only a couple more minutes, uh, a few more minutes. So what what are our thoughts as we because we started with with the pandemic and all the things going on around the world and i think people are in a in a kind of a difficult place and uh, i think it is important to bring them something what do you think sandy oh i agree a, a, mess, a message of of hope um it does seem when we look across the span of life these days um not just here within our own country and all the unrest but globally um, we see a lot of crosses that people are bearing, right? We ourselves are bearing crosses that seem too much. Um, as uh, that one article I'd, I'd sent to you, it said, it's like we have these circuit breakers and we're kind of like overloading them. There's just too much coming at us that we weren't really designed to carry the weight of the global burden, you know? Um, but you know, if we, if our response to those crosses that we carry is just that, if it remains at what a burden that is, I feel like we're kind of telling the world that the cross of Jesus is something to be avoided, right? And that's not, that's not good. Um, it, it's really a means of triumph. And we know this as believers, um, as Christians, we know what that cross represents. Um, so we would rather exalt it than belittle it. So not to make light of the difficult situations that many of us are facing globally and in our own individual lives. Um, but let's remember that those crosses, ultimately that cross led us to our eternal salvation. And that is something to celebrate. Um, I don't know how much time we have, but there was something I wanted to share with our listeners. Uh, we usually close with a prayer. Um, I had come across this in my quiet time the other morning, and I just thought it was so beautiful and, and hopeful because Again, in light of all of the uh, stress around us in this world, it's nice to have um, step back and realize that, you know what? God's beauty is still there. God is still on his throne, and he continues to still give wonderful gifts to his children. So um, I don't know. Is it time to, to go ahead and share this with the listeners? Yeah, we, I think so. Are we at that I point? So. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and read this. It was written by a woman named Henry, um, Henry Lowry Marshall. And I have this women's devotional Bible that includes some devotions from Christian women, you know, walking the same journey that we're all walking, dealing with the same struggles. Um, and some of them have, have shared some reflections. So I would love to share her reflection right now as a message of hope for all of us. It's called Rejoice. Each day upon my daily round, I find myself on holy ground. The morning glories on my fence inspire quiet reverence. Just one small tender seedling grew, and now this miracle in blue. A robin in the apple tree sings out his glad doxology. I hear the pure, unsullied joy of laughter from a little boy. I bow before the firm belief and faith of one who lives with grief, and marvel at man's enterprise as I watch a jet plane skim the skies. I look upon a field of wheat and thank God for the bread we eat. I watch the benedictive rain on low bowed heads of flour and grain. A friend drops in, a neighbor calls, the lamps are lit, night gently falls. In labors of the day well done, con contentment settles with the sun. So many little altars there, so many simple calls to prayer, 
So many reasons for Thanksgiving, the sacraments of daily living. Beautiful. Sacraments of daily living. Yes. Sacrament is the efficacious sign of God's presence. And God's presence comes to us in every little thing. So in the midst of all these painful, stressful, challenging things, let us hold on to the sacraments of daily living. So we pray that our listeners will enjoy the peace of Christ in the midst of the storms that surround us. Amen. So God bless you and we will see you or we'll talk to you in the coming months, hopefully from the studio. God bless you. God bless you.